Hi, thank you so much for joining me. In this video, we're going to walk through the steps to take the image on the left and turn it into the map poster kind of thing on the right. And we're going to cover things like georeferencing, removing midtones in the image, and colorizing that image according to you know different light properties. We're going to drape it over imagery to see how that looks. We're going to add a vignette to add focus, and we're just going to add stuff to the layout like titles and things. So this is the Shaded Relief Archive. It's an amazing resource, amazing resource. Um, and I've uh, selected U.S. National Parks, and I'm going to look at Yellowstone and see what's available there. Now there is this beautiful hand airbrushed image by Bill Van Almen in 1983 he made this and it's of Yellowstone airbrushing and it would have been used for the park map for the National Park Service. He worked for the National Park Service in the 70s and 80s. So now I'm adding that raw image into ArcGIS Pro. Now this image doesn't know that it's a map. It doesn't know where it belongs geographically. We have to tell it that. And so I've, uh, I'm looking at some distinctive characteristics in the image itself and then on the map and seeing where I can kind of put some control points to pin this into true geography. And that's called georeferencing. And I'm going to add control points. Um, control points are exactly what they sound like. You just kind of say you blip in the image, you belong here in real life and so on and so forth. You do that a certain number of times and pretty soon you've got an image that's warped to where it needs to be. <clears throat> So I'm starting with a distinctive Shoshone Lake in Yellowstone, which, by the way, you can't drive there. It's a huge lake, and you can't actually drive to it. You want to go see Shoshone Lake, then strap on your boots. And go look at Shoshone Lake. Yellowstone Lake, however, you can drive to. Huge lake. So I've uh, added a control point to this side of Yellowstone Lake. You want to try to keep these initial control points as far apart as possible. Ideally, you're doing it in the corner of the image that you're geo-referencing, but um, there were just weren't that many really confident places where I could add control points. So this is a good start, um, a surprisingly good start. I was really surprised. Uh, to my chagrin, I actually have started with a web mercator projection for my base map, and I mean, whatever projection was used in this hillshade painting, it's pretty close to to the one that uh, I'm using here, which is web mercator. It wouldn't have been exactly that, but I mean, I'm just doing a simple affine transformation. Now, affine means I'm not like really warping and bending this like it's a rubber sheet. I'm just kind of pushing and pulling it and rotating it and scaling it. That's called an affine transformation. I'm only going to put in, you know, a half dozen or so control points. And it's really, you know, going really well. I've had some real bonkers um, geo referencing escapades before, but this is, I mean, started out pretty close. Um, and I, I could even tell that these kind of windy borders of Yellowstone National Park have to do with the spine of the mountain, which are very evident in Bill's beautifully airbrushed hillshade image. Um, so here I've, you know, I'm just pushing it down in transparency so I can see behind the imagery below, toggling it on and off to see how I'm doing. You know, do I see any places that look like they're off and kind of jumping between one and the other? And it looks pretty good. So I'm just going to hit save. <clears throat> close the georeferencing tool. Now we have breathed geographic life into this amazing painting by Bill and it knows where it belongs. Now if we were to change the projection it would kind of bend and just it's geographic now. It's part of the map. It's wonderful. It's a beautiful mysterious thing. So let's take a look now at styling this map. I want to get rid of those gray midtones and just push them to be fully transparent. Now that's, I mean, kind of the whole hack of this uh, experiment. So this is a grayscale airbrushed image uh, and I'm going to, and it goes from you know, obviously black to white, it's grayscale. <clears throat> I'm going to add a control point in the center of this gradient and say, you, you are now transparent. And oh, that's cool. Now I can kind of see behind to the imagery below. And I'm going to add another one here and really uh, stretch out that area of transparency. So now I can see um, the very lightest parts of this painting showing up as the sun facing reflective sides of these geographic features. <clears throat> uh, and I'm finding I'm going to have to really pull in the dark tones because those shadows are pretty faint. 
And so what you see me doing here is just saying, hey, you know, I'm nudging the shadows forward a little bit. Like, can I see you now? Can I see you now? And there they are. So I've found the shade portion of this image. And at this point, I'm going to start playing with hue. So this is the fun stuff. So instead of just black and white, which is boring, you know, the world isn't really black and white. Um, the way that the sun works is in in uh, shaded areas of, of mountains, you know, purple mountain majesty. You know, when I was a kid, I was like, purple mountain majesty. But it's true. The way that light scatters, you know, the shorter wavelengths are the blues and stuff. And so they're the ones that bounce around in these shaded areas, especially in, in amazing geographic landscapes like this. And so I'm, I'm pulling in some purples, like a, the bluish hue part of the shadows. Um, and I mean, obviously, it's not perfect here, but you know, this is a tweaking process. So everything that you see me doing is just trying something, seeing how it looks, trying something else, seeing how it looks, and just nudging it a bit here and there until we get something that's serviceable. Um, and in my, where the shadows kind of taper off into nothing, I've, I've chosen a blue because that's how light works. And once you know how light works, you can hack all kinds of fun, beautiful things. And for my, my deeper shadows, I'm going to give that just a, a tweak to faint blue. Going to nudge up my purple shade, reduce it a little bit, bring in the, the very darkest bit. And yes, that looks good. I like this. So uh, we've got the shadows colorized. Now let's look at the sunlit slopes. Oh, that's nice. So this is kind of a, a bit of a golden color that I'm applying where it used to be just white and now it looks like you know the warm uh, longer wavelengths the reds are kind of pushing through into the mountains and the the overall mixed light is still hitting them so it's kind of a neutral washed out yellow and i'm going to push that back just a little bit and see how that looks right this is just what it's all about trying different things making the yellow a little bit bolder and seeing how that goes Oh, that's nice. Now, what I want to do is um, this last little bit here. I'll, I'll make the, the very brightest parts of this mountain pop a little bit. And so I'll just give that true white and boom. Now, the very brightest parts of this map are white. And I'll give them a little bit more room to breathe. And there, it looks like a really nice highlighting of sunlit mountains and some nice dappled blue purple shade of of where the, the light falls. Um, and then I just turn the map on and off to, to show you what I've actually got and how important the imagery is behind it. So what I'm doing here is just stealing the, the sunlit stuff that Bill painted and the shadows that Bill painted and getting rid of the midtones and letting the imagery wash through from behind. So now what I'm doing is setting up a layout. I've got my map uh, <clears throat> overlay looking the way I like. Now it's just a matter of uh, tweaking the dimensions, the width, the height, seeing what works in a layout. Uh, I've selected the layout tab itself and defined a width and a height for, you know, like a print map. And now I've activated this map view within the layout, which means I've kind of punched a hole through into the map so I can change the actual geographic scale instead of just panning and zooming in the layout itself. And now I'm fine tuning things. I'm like, eh, it could be a little bit taller, a little bit wider, that kind of thing. Like I said, I mean, much of much of what I do is just trying something and then trying something else and then trying something else forever. So let's take a look here. Wow, that's that's a pretty big difference. We've got the imagery and then what the overlay does to that imagery kind of in a couple um, on off clicks just to give us an, a sense for what we've achieved so far. Next up, I am going to, uh, oh, I looked at this and I was like, oh, you know what? I, I'm going to add a header at the top and I don't want to cover up any of the map content. So um, I need to make it a little bit taller. And it's okay if that um, the noise essentially in Bill's painting shows up at the top, the banner image, because I'm going to cover that up. So I'll activate the map view, view and drag it down a little bit so I'm not losing any of his good work and now i'm going to create just a nice bold black banner across the top and i'll open its 
properties and say, I don't want it just to be an outline. I want to give it a fill. I'll get rid of the outline. And I want that fill to be black. And pow, it's got this kind of nice, bold, classy national park system cartographic feel. Their brochures uh, make really wonderful use of just the bold black background like that. Now I'm going to give it a title. So I've just inserted a text box here, and I'm going to call it Yellowstone National Parks in all caps. And I'm typing blindly, but there it is. Okay. And believe it or not, I think I actually spelled everything right on my first go around, unless you see something I spelled wrong. I, I feel like there's always something that I've spelled wrong in a map of mine. And maybe that's my own map trap, cartographic trap. Oh, you spelled it wrong. Must be John's. Um, so let's play with color. Uh, I thought, you know, I could echo a little bit of the color from the shade, that, that purple, and do something that's almost white, but just a little bit purple, echoing the hue of the Purple Mountain's majesty in this case. And we'll see how it looks. Stretch that guy out. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's make it a little bit bigger so we can actually see what we're working with here. Give it a nice, appropriately sized head. And I hate it, it looks terrible. Okay, there we go. You know it's always going to look good if you have that deep gold yellow on top of a black background. It gives you a nice National Geographic vibe. They know what they're doing, and it's a good combination. It's a beautiful combination. So at this point, I'm just playing with the, the size and the letter spacing and the position, uh, you know, futzing around with stuff, just pushing and pulling. Again, that's just that's mainly what we cartographers do is push and pull stuff and check it out. Okay, so we've got a, a serviceable header here. We could always spend more time tweaking it. But now what I want to do is add a vignette. Yes, uh, no map of mine would be complete without a vignette. I love them. I, I minored in photography in college, and so I think everything needs a vignette. It just helps draw the eye. And so I've added a, a rectangle here, and I'm filling it with a nice smooth gradient, a continuous gradient from uh, semi-transparent black to fully transparent black. And we'll, we'll push that edge black down to, let's say, just 30% opaque, which is 70% transparent. See what that looks like. And it doesn't look like anything. I don't like it. And what I'm going to do here is just jump over to a gradient that I have saved before. See how it's way wider. Oh, that's great. Now I know where I'm looking, and it gives this dramatic, see that? On off. It gives this dramatic cinematic effect to your map. And it doesn't have to be black. It can be you know, any kind of color depending on the, the content of your map and how it looks. So now I'm going to add uh, some credits here. I mean, Bill did most of the work here. I'm just assembling things and, and playing with color. And so I'm going to go back to the Shaded Relief Archive website and see what they recommend as a citation and do it. I mean, hats off to you guys and hats off to Bill. So I want to, I want to give him credit uh, and the National Park Service. So here's his name. And then, you know, it's just playing with, with size. Obviously, the credit's not going to be as big as the, the title of the map. Um, got it down there. I'll push it down in, in the bottom of the map to, to lend a bit of balance to the composition to kind of counterpoint the, the big bold header where the title sits. And I'll just, you know, get it just so. Now I'm duplicating this and I'm adding uh, my own name. So it's cool to sign stuff. My mom always said, sign your work, right? If somebody hasn't signed their work, it means they're not proud of it, vice versa. Um, and so I'll say this is blended with Esri base map imagery, and I'll give myself layout credits. A layout created by John Nelson. That's me. Layout created by John Nelson. And this, I want to be small. This is definitely second billing to the airbrushing work here. So I'll, I'll just push that down pretty dramatically. And I've got some weird mental thing where if I've got two lines of text, I really want them to end at the same width as each other even though they're differently sized it just kind of looks cleaner to me but anyways I could spend a long time doing that kind of thing so let's let's move on you get the you get the gist so here's my map 
now let's add we'll, we'll turn on that parks layer that I have in there that I haven't I haven't turned on yet um, and it's just got that nice golden stroke um, but I'll I'll widen it a little bit because I can't really see it and yeah it appears a little bit better um, and I mean pixels are free so let's just start trying different things uh, I've got my my gold outline and now I want to give it uh, maybe like a gold burn radiative glow effect and so I'm just doing a gradient stroke and I'm saying start with gold and then taper off to fully transparent gold make it kind of thick and hit apply and see how that oh it looks pretty bad <laughs> super tacky so let's let's do something a little bit classier and make it a, a black glow effect or a drop shadow effect that helps helps frame the actual geographic area of Yellowstone and it's it's a nice kind of lovely little elegant effect to kind of push away your border and say this is the border and then kind of give an indication for the stuff that's inside is the stuff that counts and we're covering up a little bit of the stuff on the outside I just like how it looks <clears throat> um, but what I don't like is that part of the Grand Tetons are coming in and and interrupting our composition here so what I'm gonna do is open what's called a definition query and I'm gonna say hey layer hey parks layer if your name is Yellowstone then you may stay and we'll see how that looks boom it worked now only Yellowstone is appearing in our map we got rid of the Tetons Tetons is a beautiful park maybe you know it deserves its own map after this so that footer is really just bothering me so I hate it so I'm gonna make a copy of that big black banner I had at the top and just make a smaller version of it to, to much better balance uh, the visual composition the weight of it so cartography um, a lot of cartography is about just finding a balance in your layouts composition making sure it's not too heavy up top or on the side and things are jammed in one corner or the other um, so I've got um, my little black background here and because I've got that black background the text doesn't have to be as big in order to be legible uh, you know on top of the base map and so I can really push that back <clears throat> a lot and if I was taking more time I'd also add more text on the right maybe talking about the method um, the date that that bill airbrushed this which was 1983 and there we go this is the finished map and I don't know it, it, I think it took me about a half hour to do and you've seen every step some of it in a little bit fast forward but I haven't skipped anything that is that now you know how to make this map from scratch and I hope you give it a shot thank you so much for watching check out some of these other resources I've got available for you and I hope you have a great day